We're gonna need some toilet paper today. <laughs> Welcome back to Casa Refine. My name is Jorge and today we're gonna create textured wall art using paper mache clay. Now, what is paper mache clay? Paper mache clay is basically paper mache, but in clay form, as the name says. And this is actually my second time working with it. My first video, I kind of got my hands in it and I loved it and I kind of like transformed some vases and I thought it was pretty cool. So let's see if we can use this material to create wall art. Now, the great thing about paper mache clay is that it's relatively easy to make and pretty affordable. Now, this recipe is uh, derived from Johnny's recipe over at ultimatepapermacheclay.com. I will put maybe the link in the description if you want to learn more about it and stuff. Um, she also has a YouTube channel where she makes really wonderful things. So I definitely go recommend uh, checking out her channel. Now this recipe doesn't call for much, but we are going to need some Elmer's glue all or some PVA glue. We're also going to need some joint compound, um, which is used for like wall texture or um, drywall. You can get this at Lowe's, Walmart, Home Depot, or any hardware store. I'll also, by the way, link everything that I can for this recipe in the description. So be sure to check that out. You're also going to need some paper, cardboard, newspaper, or something that will easily break down. If it's something thicker, it's just going to require some more time for it to sit in water. The easiest thing would probably be some toilet paper. So I got some rolls over from Dollar Tree here. We're also going to need some water and some flour. So some all-purpose flour that you would use for baking and such. So... As I said, I will be doubling, maybe even tripling up the recipe that I show in the video because I'm actually going to work on other projects outside of this video, but you will see the recipe up on the screen. Now, the first step is to soak our toilet paper. You can use other paper as well. Um, if it's thicker, potentially you will use some warm water instead and kind of just let it sit for a few hours. You could also blend it with a blender, just like traditional paper mache, but honestly, toilet paper is probably the fastest, easiest, less mess method to do so. Next, I am removing the excess water from the toilet paper. I find it easiest to use the strainer. I actually picked this up from Dollar Tree. We don't want it to be too wet, but not too dry either. Kind of buttery soft. Next, I'm adding my pre-mixed drywall joint compound, which is what it's typically referred to here in the States, but it might also be referred to as mud, joint filler, or drywall filler. You know, I find it best to mix with just a regular old hand mixer. You could also maybe use a drill with a mixer attachment. You could even just use a wooden spoon, but of course it will take some time. Now that that's mixed, let's add our Elmer's glue or again, PVA glue, and this will add strength to our mixture. After mixing for a few minutes, it's time to add the flour. And the purpose of the flour is to thicken the paper mache clay consistency. So the more flour, the thicker it will be, and it will act more as a clay, giving it more of a sculpting property. Now at this point, I can add the mineral slash baby oil, which is totally optional. It calls for it in the original recipe, and I don't really know its exact purpose, but I don't have any on hand, so I'm not gonna add it. And now our paper mache clay is ready for sculpting, but first, my body needs some nutrients. That time of the day. I actually prefer drinking this, like become part of my morning ritual, but this is AG1, today's video sponsor. I actually have seen this for a while and I wanted to get my hands on it and try it. I've been taking it for a couple of weeks now. It's worth the hype in my opinion because AG1 is a daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. AG1 is my daily dose of vitamin C, zinc, functional mushrooms, and more to support my overall immune health. And it's not complicated at all. So you have your AG1. You can, I actually just got my second one. Here you've refilled the canister and there is this scoop that pre-portioned you just put it in some water mix it up drink up <laughs> it's literally that simple but some days are pretty busy and so i also have these little packets that are perfect for on the go every batch is nsf certified for sport the gold standard for those who must follow strict rules regarding the use of supplements and nutritional products it also supports focus and energy stress and mood balance and healthy aging <laughs> and there's so many different benefits from this like even just like looking through the supplement facts it's all in this 
So go to drinkag1.com slash Casa Refine to get started with your order. And AG1 is giving Casa Refine subscribers a free one year supply of AG vitamin D3 plus K2 and five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. That's drinkag1.com slash Casa Refine to get started. And thanks again to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so we have our paper mache clay here ready to go. I made a big batch and I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> kind of looks tasty. Like I want to eat it. Kind of looks like porridge or um, some oatmeal without the oatmeal. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not going to eat it because I don't want to die. So we're ready to create some wall art. So I'm going to just set this aside for now and kind of prep our art surfaces. So I'm just going to be using actually just simple 16 by 20 inch canvas panels. But this could be done in a larger scale, smaller scale. For artwork number one, we're gonna test the power of the paper mache clay and see how well it can sculpt. So I'm applying it onto the canvas using an art sculpting knife and really see how well I can spread it and kind of just test different patterns and things like that. So I ended up just using my fingers and just really embracing the material, having fun. And just, that's the beauty of art, right? Just having fun and letting it talk to you and kind of guide the process. Now I don't like to go in depth with my artistic analysis on like what I'm making in my videos but would rather just leave that for interpretation for you as the viewer but I will say I'm having fun creating this organic form it's kind of interesting let me know what it looks like but really just having fun with this set that aside to dry in the meantime let's get started with art number two okay so for this art piece again we have our canvas panel here i'm going to set that aside for now before i add texture because i want this one to feel more structural uh, a little bit more modern feeling but again with the contrasted like organic texture i think it's going to be interesting so to add more depth and structure to it i'm going to use some cardboard i don't know why but i was having some trouble kind of coming up with a design for this piece so i I did a couple quick sketches to kind of get the creative juices flowing and I think I figured out a solution here. So I'm going to take this cardboard and I'm going to cut some rectangles. Now I originally started cutting some slimmer thinner ones but I ended up not using them. I'm not using for another project but what I ultimately decided was kind of two conjoining forces that were broken apart perhaps maybe I don't know. So this is what I'm doing with a rectangle. Um, Yeah just watch. The glue all will ensure that it is nice and secure in the long run, but some hot glue will hold it in place for now as I work on this piece. Now we're ready to add our paper mache clay, but just really quickly, I want to do a quick shameless plug because I just added some beautiful, rustic, elegant pieces to help make your space feel a little bit more refined from Mikasa to yours. Head over to casarefineshop.com to see the latest arrivals. Anyways, like I said, let's add our paper mache clay texture. Now, very similar to the first one, I'm just going to take my sculpting uh, knife here and just spread it on as even as I possibly can, but also making sure that I cover the edges of the cardboard. We do not want this to look like a DIY project. Well, this is artwork, right? We're covering up everything nicely, making sure it is nice and consistent and make this look kind of more monolithic in my opinion, but also embrace the properties of this clay and create some organic texture. So for this art piece, I was kind of brainstorming a different way to kind of add depth to the art piece. So I'm going to take this uh, 16 by 20 inch canvas and I'm going to use this plastic plate. Initially, I was going to glue the plate onto the canvas and just texture everything, but I thought it would be more interesting if I created a contrast, a juxtaposition almost of texture so that this piece could really stand out. So I used the plate as a guide so that I wouldn't texture that inner circle and then just had fun basically on the outside, having fun with textures. I don't know, I'll take a drink every time I say texture in this video, but next I am removing the plate and look at that. Isn't that kind of interesting? Kind of neat, but I'm do need to clean up the edge just a bit.
Okay, so it's been actually a couple of days because the thing about paper mache clay is that it takes a while to dry and it really just depends on how thick it is. So it's taking quite a bit to dry slash cure. Um, so I think we are now ready to do um, add some paint and um, I kind of been thinking of like what direction I want to go with. To some extent, I really just want to emphasize the texture of these, which makes them just so beautiful. But real quick, I'm going to do just some light sanding on some areas, especially with like, I think it might be like the paper fibers. They're kind of a little sharp and they stick out. So I'm just going to sand that off to make sure it's it's nice and smooth, you know? But overall, I'm pretty happy with these. I might even make some more. Let me know if you want me to make some more. For this piece, we're gonna stick to a monochromatic theme here and really just play off of off-white. So just giving kind of a bone-like color, perhaps? The trick to making a monochromatic piece not feel so flat is to vary the basically intensity or the amount of white that you use. So kind of just varying all of that, plus also highlighting the areas that you want to stand out. In this case, the uh, textured portions, we'll call them. And that I think really stands to make this piece look more organic feeling too. For piece number three, I'm also going to take a monochromatic approach with really just working off of brown, but creating a variation between that with some color, but still brown, chocolate almost. So I'm brushing the entire piece and then we'll go in and start to layer color to see if that can make it feel less flat. Now I let this painting dry and I have to say it's still looking a little flat to me. So I'm going to, I think, layer some more lighter colors and see if that can sort of highlight the texture because it's, like I said, it's, it's looking a little flat. Splattering some paint is always a good idea. Plus I'm also kind of refocusing on the center of this piece and creating just a slight variation in color so that the texture stands out. But what about art number two? Let's see if we can bring it to life with some taupe slash charcoal colors. Very muted, yes, but I think those colors in itself are very beautiful paired together. So I'm kind of adding some slight warm undertones with some orange, some yellow to create this beautiful taupe color. Adding some white to the paint mix slightly lightens the color so that it starts to add depth. Let's give our prominent shape some prominent color. This sort of warm tone charcoal color will do just that. So dabbing it in. Also adding some darker black paint to create some moments of darkness, some moments of lightness. This makes the piece feel less flat. All right, so here is our dried painting. It looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to actually still layer some more uh, sort of chocolate color, maybe actually a lighter color and see if that will create more variation with the colors because I think it's also looking a little flat. So sometimes it just, it just requires some analyzation, analysis. I think that's the right word. Okay, so the artwork is now finished. Look at that texture. These are all wonderful. I'm so happy with them. I need to sign them though. Um, but they are so wonderful. I love each of them. Now I'm gonna go ahead and frame them. And a frame is very important for artwork, of course. Sometimes we don't want the frame to do any talking. We want the artwork to do the talking. Sometimes we want sort of a more ornate frame to really pair the painting nicely. So now I'm not gonna share how I made the frames because I've shared it in past videos. Plus I'm not very good at explaining. Like I've tried and I don't know, I'm not good at it. So the good thing about YouTube is there's a whole 
bunch of videos out there that show you how to make maybe a floater frame. But if you don't want to make any frames, I would definitely recommend heading to your local antique stores, vintage stores, Etsy, marketplace where you can find just old frames that you can reuse for your own artwork. And you know, sometimes there's some really beautiful ones that you can find. This is an antique or vintage frame that I sourced a while ago. I also have this one. Another beautiful solid wood vintage frame that I think is just so beautiful. I still need to sign this, but without further ado, here is final artwork number one. I love this piece. I will say I like to keep it real with you. I don't know if the frame was the right choice, but I do love the artwork. Let me know your thoughts. I watch you as you drive. Do you know I'm looking? And I can't help but smile. Do you know how much I love you? put my favorite song on i put my feet up and, and here's the final result for artwork number two take a look at the frame choice for this one do you think this was a better fit let me know your thoughts on this piece i absolutely love this one this moment can we stay here together if i could stop the time don't you know that i would because i Of course, we cannot forget about artwork number three because this one leans more modern, but it feels very organic at the same time. I do think this is a good frame choice. I might have to stain the frame, but let me know your thoughts on this piece. I watch you as you sleep. You don't know I'm looking with you. I absolutely love the texture of these. And thanks so much for sticking around to the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making these. Let me know in the comments your favorite art piece. Do you like number one, two, or number three? You know, I'm kind of thinking about reframing number one. I feel like the frame might be a little too much. I'm not sure. I also want to thank AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to go to drinkag1.com slash Casa Refine to get started today. Also, come say hi over on Instagram. I love seeing what you all are working on. So have an awesome day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.